Bombardier launched the C-Series. They said it was going to be a game changer in that narrow body 100 to 150 seat air transport market. Well, since Airbus has taken over, they're beginning to prove that point. It's certainly making a difference with those airlines. But like other narrow bodies before, there's another use that's drawing attention, and that's the business aircraft one, the VVIP aircraft, the head of state. Now this week, of course, we should have been at Geneva for the uh, eBay show. Had we have been there, I've no doubt this would have been one of the major talking points. It's the VIP version of an A220. Now we're joined on the program now by Stephen Vella, the CEO of Kestrel Aviation, and Tom Chatfield from Canberra Aviation, who work together on the BBJ787 Dreamliner, the world's first VVIP for that aircraft. And now they've got this new team and a new project. Guys, welcome to the program. Well, Alan, a pleasure to be um, talking to you again. The, um, the team that, that actually is working on this exciting project uh, actually participated in the Kestrel 787 uh, VIP project. And uh, essentially, it was the success of that project that motivated us to fundamentally stop and look at uh, the large cabin market and what the needs and wants of, of the market were. We had a, a, a steep learning curve with the 787. There, there were a lot of new design uh, features in that aircraft, and we thought, well, why not leverage that onto a narrow body uh, project that built on what we had achieved on the 787? So Tom, you're you're a Canadian, and um, so you're I'm sure familiar with the former C series. Just talk us through the design, how you how you've made this such an incredibly different aircraft to the one that Bombardier originally and Airbus Airbus now is marketing. The A220 um, proved to be the ideal platform. It's it's a clean sheet design. Um, the interior cabin is uh, well suited to be able to. Um, configure it into a, a corporate aircraft. And, um, and we thought that that would be an ideal launch platform for this concept that, we're, that we'd be developing. It has a space, it has uh, as much floor space as a, an A319 or a BBJ Max 7. Um, it's got lots of height, lots of width, and uh, together we were able to design, a, I think, a very innovative and, and welcoming interior. So just talk us through quickly the whole concept and the different compartment blocks you have in the design. Yes, um, so what we did is, is we looked at what the market is looking for. And there were certain parts of an aircraft which we feel is, is, is standard in the market that people would want to have. Um, they want a separate crew area in the front. They want to have a, a mid-cabin lavatory and they would prefer to have the, uh, the private suite at the back of the aircraft. So we took those three concepts and turned them into three fixed zones. The forward area of the aircraft, which includes a separate uh, crew lavatory, the galley and the, the entrance area is standard on the aircraft. In the mid cabin, we have a, a VIP lavatory and a, and a large wardrobe across from it. And at the aft end of the aircraft, we have the private suite with, uh, with an ensuite washroom and, uh, and a steam shower. In between, we have four variable zones. Three of them will have the same dimensions and one is slightly larger. And these th four zones, we can then put different modules into it depending on what the uh, owner wishes to use the aircraft for. So for example, if you've got a private owner, he may wish or she may wish to have uh, one of the compartments as a children's bedroom, which is I think quite unique in this, uh, in this field. Another ahead of state may wish to be able to carry entourage. So in the forward compartment, we have the ability to go from six seats in a very comfortable club seating, all the way up to 15 seats if he uh, or she wants to now, Stephen, I, I've worked with designers before, and if you have three designers in a room, you've probably got six different strong opinions. How did you, you actually work together? I mean, you've got uh, Jacques Pierre Jean, who, you know, is a genius anyway. You've got you guys, and you've brought in others as well to work with you, haven't you, with uh, people like Flying Colours and so on. We, we look at the concept not only from a design point of view but from a operability maintainability accessibility point of view so we look at it from a uh, technical maintenance point of view we look at it from the customer's point of view and then very very important is to bring the detail industrial design and aesthetics into the concept which is where jacques 
joined us. And as and you're right, he is he is very talented. The, the reason this system works is because there's a sense of mutual respect uh, for each other's contribution to the concepts. And we'll go around an iterative uh, process until we get something that actually meets the criteria of aesthetics, maintainability, customer expectations, and so on and so forth. Extending that um, a design, because that design then gels into um, uh, a creation that has two dimensions and three dimensions, including renderings. At that stage, we need to flip to the, the challenges of fabrication and also integration and certification. And that's where we uh, uh, collaborated with F-List for fabrication and Flying Colors for, um, for the integration and certification. And Tom, there's a lot of interest I know from airlines with the A220 because of things like its fuel efficiency. I mean, it's a new aircraft. Do you see that being a benefit as well for this as an alternative uh, business? Yeah, it, it's, it's a huge benefit. When you take a look at the, uh, the empty weight of a 220 and compare it to uh, a comparable aircraft like a 319, it's a significantly lighter aircraft. It has uh, uh, much more fuel efficient engines. Now, we can argue that the engines are very similar between the NEO and the 220, but nonetheless, the, uh, the A220 was designed for those engines from the outset. So aerodynamically, the aircraft is optimized. Um, when we take a look at the uh, fuel burn, it's significantly lower. And, uh, and the aircraft has uh, a totally reprofiled nose. If you were to compare the nose of a 220 against a, uh, a 320 or a 737, you can see there's been uh, a good three decades of innovation before uh, uh, from, an, from an aerodynamics point of view. So at the moment, we know that the manufacturer will be dead happy to get rid of a few aircraft. This might be the time to get your hands on an A220 and come to you guys and get it fitted like this. It would be a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Thank you.